Friends of my YouTube channel, I am so delighted to get to talk to this guy today because he's a superstar in my mind, and maybe not in his mind, but he certainly is in mine. Uh, I have Kirk LaRange from the other side of the world. Kirk, you're in Australia, but what part of Australia are you in? I'm in a place called Tambourine Mountain. That sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? It does sound pretty cool. It's what? a tambourine without the U, T-A-M-B-O-R-I-N-E, which is apparently an Aboriginal word meaning something. Not, not, um, it doesn't mean tambourine. Either. No, no, I often say it's, it's a, an Aboriginal word meaning small hand drum with, with jangles. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah. so, so, where is Tambourine Mount? What's that close to? If, if we were to look on the map, it, it's it's close to Brisbane. That's the, the closest big city, uh, and we're we're kind of about uh, twenty miles inland from the Gold Coast, which is like Australia's Miami. Wow. Yeah. Well, now, so, so the Gold Coast, if it's if it's Australia's Miami, then that means you're on the north side. Is that the north side of uh, is, is that where Brisbane is? No, it's on the, the east side. East side, okay, okay. Yeah, so we're, we're right at, almost at the most easterly point of the spring. Okay, is, okay. Well, now I'm going to ask you about, first of all, before I, I don't, I don't want to go too much into geography and all that yet, but before, as you can see, Kirk Kirk has a lot of guitars behind him. And I'm going to tell you how I found about found out about Kirk. Uh, years ago, uh, I had to play guitar for a Cancer Survivors Day event. It's a big event for the, mm -hmm. the hospital system where I work, and and it was a tribute to the 50s. And so one of the songs, we were playing a bunch of different songs, and one of the songs we were playing was Santo and Johnny's uh, uh, Sleepwalk. And so, yeah. and, and so I'm thinking, okay, well, so i got to play some slide, and it's been a while since i played some slide. I wonder if anyone has done a, a slide of Sleepwalk. And so I type in sleepwalk uh, guitar slide, and right right quick your video came up, and I watched it, and I said, "Wow, now that's brilliant." <laughs> and then and then so of course naturally I go to watch Little Wing on slide. So Jimi Hendrix's Little Wing on slide. There's Kirk playing a just a fantastic, beautiful, beautiful version on slide. And Kirk, if it's okay, I, I don't want to like take hits or I don't want to, you know, copyright infringe on you, but I might put 15 seconds or so of each of these on the oh, video. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so be sure to go watch the entire, th those videos in their entirety, but then watch all the, so then I started finding out that Kirk does these great uh, tutorials. Finger style stuff, slide stuff, all kinds of just just very well crafted, put together arrangements that that are easy to to use because he does these great uh, animations and things using um, using Adobe Premiere Pro. I, and I I can't quite understand exactly how he does it, but he's he's pretty freaking great, is what he is. <laughs> And, and, uh, and, and so, so he's a great educator, but he's a tremendous player. He's a he's a class A player, is what I, I'm going to say. If you've uh, if you've not listened to him, go there and listen to him. Um, Kirk, I will say this: I was doing a live stream, um, I don't know, probably four, five, six weeks ago, about my favorite uh, guitar players online, and before I could get to you, somebody else got to you, and so several. Oh, and then, so then there was a little discussion about, well, Kirk Larange, man, that guy's great. And, and, and Kirk has a bunch of subscribers. He, he's, he has a, a book that he puts out called Plain Talk that teaches just some of the best, no-nonsense, uh, rudimentary, but then also advanced, rudimentary to advanced uh, mapping of the fretboard so that you understand where you're going. And I try to use some of Kirk's techniques. 
Uh, it, it sort of transforms to, to some extent the way that I play. And I'm going to shut up now. I mean, there's my introduction. I want to talk to the master and, and, and hear a little bit about plain talk. But first of all, I, I just talk about your background, Kirk. How, how did you come to be a guitar player? And just, just run us through your history. And I don't care how long it takes for you to tell it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let me think. Um, when I was 11, uh, I was living in Belgium at the time. My dad worked for an American tire company. Uh, I was actually born in Mexico. My mother's English, my dad's Canadian. I was actually born in Mexico, then uh, we moved to uh, Venezuela, Caracas, Venezuela, till I was about seven, and then Havana, Cuba, till I was about eight, and then Belgium, till I was 14. And only after that did we go back to Canada. But living in Belgium, I heard um, Apache. I heard the, the shadows of Apache. <laughs> And I thought I have to, I have to do that. That's what I want to do. I want to make those sounds, you know. And uh, so I got my first guitar when I was 11. Uh, and in Belgium, there were no teachers. There was no books, no internet, none of that. I just kind of figured it out, you know. I actually had a tune wrong for the first year. When I brought it home, I thought fifth fret, fifth fret, fifth fret, fourth fret. And I thought, oh no, no, hang on. So I, I tuned that B string up to C. Wow. And then the E string up to F. So I was I was tuned to force the whole way for the whole first year. I was tuned uh, wrong. So whenever I looked at a picture, you know, of a chord, it never sounded right for me, obviously. Um, and uh, my dad used to he was a, a music lover. And uh, when I was about twelve, I guess not long after I started, I heard uh, Charlie Bird playing on an album with Stan Getz. Uh, that's Bossa Nova, that first Bossa Nova album. And uh, I thought, that's what I want to be. I want to play with my fingers. I want to be like Charlie Bird. And then I started listening to flamenco players. Uh, anyone who played with their fingers, they were my heroes, you know? And I would listen to, uh, I'd get the, the uh, albums out and put them on half speed slow it down by half and I, I just figure it out. I, I had a good ear so I could I could listen to intervals and things. Uh, and then uh, we moved back to Canada when I was 14 and uh, then I started hearing uh, players like James Taylor. Yeah. There was a, you know, as soon as I heard him, I thought, oh man, that's, that's, you know, now, now we're talking. Finger style, but modern music. And uh, so I bought my first uh, steel string then. And uh, not long after that, I, my first gig was in Montreal uh, at the Sir Winston Churchill Pub. Uh, I had been for a little while a commercial artist, which is what you 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 do that too, do you? Um, <laughs> we, uh, you, you know, I said, you call me commercial artist. Well, yeah, I'm a graphic designer. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I did my first gig. Uh, I, I was a, worked in a commercial art studio, but I made more money in that one night a week that I played playing live than I made in the whole week being a commercial artist. So I quit that. And um, and then I started, I started traveling back to Europe with my guitar and uh, met people and learned more and uh, eventually wound up here uh, in, in Australia. I met a woman in London, England. I, I lived in London for a while, uh, had a few bands there. In fact, in London, I bought my first um, Stratocaster. That one right there. The, 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 brown yeah. one, the brown one that we see on all the videos? Yeah. Yeah. It sounds great. I had, <laughs> I had uh, done an album there with a fellow Canadian. We signed up to an a, a English producer, a guy with money, uh, and uh, I bought that guitar. And when I bought it, um, the guy said, uh, that's a good, that's, that's an old Strat, by the way, it's a second-hand Strat. He said, uh, when you're, if you need it worked on, go out the back and ask Seymour. Seymour will set it up for you. It was Seymour Duncan. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you got special, so you've actually met Seymour Duncan. Well, we were in a band together. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so okay, you just you're blowing my mind. I'll tell you why he's blowing my mind because he's he knows Seymour Duncan. He's played in a band with him. Uh, he was inspired 
to to write Plain Talk by one of Paul McCartney's guitar players, one of his one of his touring musicians. A guy named was it McDonough? Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Uh, what, what's the name that you said? Did I say uh, McCullough? McCullough. McCullough. Oh, McCullough. I, I guess I'm thinking. Yeah. I guess I'm thinking, got McDonough in my mind. I'm, I'm a fan of um, of uh, Raising Arizona, a, uh, a old movie. You might have seen H.I. Oh, McDonough. Yeah. Anyway, and yeah. but but not only that, he knows Tommy Emmanuel, and he did an interview just recently with Tommy. So these are these are like these are like my heroes, my absolute heroes, and and so Kirk's one of my heroes. But then because I'm connected to Kirk, I'm like, I, I you know that six degrees of separation thing that people do with Kevin Bacon. I am one degree of separation from Tommy Emmanuel, from Paul McCartney's guitar player, and from Seymour freaking Duncan. <laughs> uh, I've got I've got a couple more for you. Okay, too. tell me some more. <laughs> uh, my sister, who was in radio uh, in Calgary. Uh, she met Don Felder. Oh man! She made she made sure that my she played some of my slide guitar in the background when she was interviewing because he he wrote he wrote that book about being in the Eagles. Yeah. Did, and he 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 said to her he said what's that music she's oh that's my brother he said wow he said oh wow tell him to uh, come over and join me on stage in Calgary if he wants to come I've got a concert coming up because Don Felder's wife was from Calgary. Wow. So I went over. I went over and uh, met Don and caught up and played uh, uh, an SRV tune. I can't remember which one it was. Uh. But that was quite fun. And is, another time, it, 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 I got I to ask, is there video of you playing with Don? Yeah. Is it on, yeah. is it on your site? No, it's on YouTube. Just It's just a little clip that my sister took in the audience. It's just just my solo. I just played a slide solo. Well, well I might include just a tiny bit of that in the video as well. Sure. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but before you move on, okay, so just, just so you know, because you don't know this, but so I learned how to play lead guitar from five from about five different people and, and when i say learn how to play it, 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 such as i know how to play it uh and one of them was don felder so don felder uh, okay. the, the, one of my favorite solos that's ever been played one of my favorite i think it's just a melodic awesome solos from one of these nights And I actually yeah. have a video on my channel about how uh, how that how I learned a lot of my lead guitar technique. I listened to Mark Knopfler, uh, uh, which you know your playing talk reminds me a lot of Mark Knopfler's playing because Knopfler plays off the chords so much. <clears throat> you know, yeah. he, he plays off those D minors or the Cs, the B flats. You know, uh, of course, you, you learn set down by the water line, or you or uh, or you learn a Romeo and Juliet solo, or a Tunnel of Love, or of course Sultan's a Swing, and, and, and a lot of that is a uh, it's stuff that I knew, and it didn't crystallize until I read your book. I mean, okay. these are solos I've been playing, but I was wondering, why am I, you know, it's really cool. So he's playing mm -hmm. around the D minor. He's playing, he plays around chord shapes, and that's what that's what Kirk specializes in. That's why he sounds so melodic. But so it was Felder. It was um, it was a guy named Gary Rosington that played for uh, uh, the Leonard Skinner Band. Uh, and then it was, uh, like I say, it was, uh, it was uh, oh, my, oh, my goodness. It's, of course, Jimmy Page. And uh, and then Alex Lifeson from Rush was that was a big Rush fan as I was a kid. And I, so so I learned a lot of finger style guitar because Alex Lifeson would do classical intros to these Rush songs, and and I would and here again I'm, I'm just like you I'm just listening to records. Just folks, this is before we had tabs, and before we had the internet to go look at video. You had to pick that needle up and down, listen to it. I am impressed that you went half speed, and it, so you're playing. You're listening to it an octave low. <laughs> it's right, still, yeah. but, but anyway, I'll, I'll hush again. So, so continue on. You did Felder, and there's one more you're going to share there. Oh, yeah, one more. It's Ringo Starr. You know Ringo. Tell me your Ringo story. I, I played in a band with uh, a guy called uh, uh, Glenn Shark. Oh, gosh, um, that's Little River Band. That's right. You, you, uh, so you when, know when, Glenn? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I, I know all those Australian. I mean, I played on a lot of their albums. Oh, know. I'm such a Little River Band fan. Okay, continue on. Yeah. You go on, well, brother. When when he left Little River Band, when they broke up, he went out on the road alone as a solo artist. And uh, he, he got me in the band. And uh, we were doing a TV show here in Australia, a guy called Michael Parkinson. He was a kind of an interviewer uh, guy, you know, had a show, the Michael Parkinson show once a week. And uh, on the show, he had Glenn come on. He was promoting his single. And uh, Ringo Starr was in town in Sydney. This was in Sydney. Well, I, I lived in Sydney for most of the time before I moved up here. And uh, Glenn, uh, Glenn, Glenn we, we mimed to his, his um, single. But the whole band was there. Well, all our equipment was there. And uh, Ringo came on with his wife, Barbara Bach. And uh, he was a bit tipsy. He'd been out on the Sydney Harbor all day long drinking wine. So he was, he was really out there. Anyway, at the end of the show, the, uh, Michael Parkinson said to him, he said, OK, Ringo, well, you know what we're going to ask you to do now? He said, we've got a, another drum kit set up, and uh, you're going to play us out. So we did um, Honey Don't live. Wow. Uh, yeah, and uh, I played a slide song, and that was like 1984, you know. <laughs> that was years and years ago. But uh, so, yeah, he was a real nice guy. <laughs> He's very funny. <clears throat> so, so, yeah. so I have to ask again, have you ever sussed out the video on that? Have you ever gone and asked for Mr. Parkinson's uh, video? That's on, no, that's on YouTube, too. Is it also on there? Okay. It's like, God, that's enough. Yeah. I got some homework to do, man. I got to go watch some. Uh, yeah. I got to go so, watch <laughs> some legendary Kirk LaRange. <laughs> you won't recognize me. You won't recognize me. I was just a kid, you know. But um, yeah, so that's been fun. And Tommy, Tommy's always, you know, I've met Tommy when I first came to Australia. Um, he was just, he was still a teenager, I think, when I first got here. Uh, what a and, monster uh, musician he, he is. blew my mind, yeah. But, yeah, but was, you know, okay, so of course we're talking about these, these cream of the crop elites, but you are that good too, my friend. You, you are a marvelous a marvelous player of, of so many different styles. And uh, so I have a number of just questions. That, but first of all, I haven't let you finish your case. Okay, so we, we got off on the starstruck type thing, but but continue <laughs> on. Pick up where we left off as far as, because uh, we haven't even got to plane talk yet or anything, but no, tell, no. tell us some more about your history. Well, uh, that came about because when I first came here, um, I, I started doing guitar workshops. You know, people would that, that call me up and say, would you like to do a workshop? And, and because I'm self-taught, I didn't really ever kind of understand how I played. You know, I just kind of, I thought I just did it, you know. Um, but people would say, oh, come on, don't be silly. You, know? you, you must be doing something, you know, to, to, know, to do what you do. And uh, when I thought about it, I, I, I thought, well, I, I, I know I keep track of that. that I'm not going to go into it here because that's the, that's the plain talk we're talking about. But I had already noticed these landmarks on the guitar fretboard. Uh, and, and the more I looked into them, the more powerful they became. And so I started teaching people this, this simple way of looking at the fretboard. Uh, and they all, you know, a lot of people said, man, that's, that's all I need. Thank you. You know, I, I don't need any more lessons. Uh, now I just got to practice because you've shown me this, I call it the trick, the trick to seeing the whole fretboard. I call it a super chord. You know, I, I can see the whole fretboard as a chord. Yeah. I don't see chords as little clusters of notes. I see the whole fretboard. And, uh, you know, my the way I see music is that uh, the chord of the moment is calling the shots. Whatever chord is in play right now, is uh, that's what you should be keeping track of, not scales, not, you know, that's, that's too much information, you know? Right. The chord is crystallized in the moment. So uh, if you can keep track of the chord, and if you can see the whole fretboard as the chord, you're a long way ahead, you know, you're, you're doing well. Uh, so I, I started teaching this at workshops, and then, and then I turned it into a little 14-page handwritten thing I could hang out, hand out to people. Uh, and, and then I started thinking, people said, man, you've got you to 
teach this, you know, write a book. So <laughs> I wrote the plane talk, which was a comic strip story. You know, I, I tried writing it out like a proper textbook, you know, and it just didn't work. Uh, I, I kept thinking I need I need someone to ask questions that I can then answer. So I, I devised this this uh, this story where these the two and, guys and, meet. And you illustrated it all yourself, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. folks, so you know, it looks like a really cool comic book. I mean, it really does. If you if you like comic books and you like guitar, this is your thing. <laughs> I mean, and that's that's it, it's. Like I say, it's brilliantly put together. It's brilliantly packaged. It's easy to understand. It gets deep at some point. You get so far in there. So it's two guys talking on a plane. Yeah. And, and that's the reason it's called plane talk. But to continue on, yeah. Well, I, I should say now, it's no longer a book. Oh. I, I'm, I'm not selling the book anymore. Okay. COVID killed that for me. Uh, it's all online now. You can read the original book. Yeah. I, I put it, the comic strip is there on, on, online. But uh, no, COVID killed it. You know, the, the air mail from Australia yeah. basically stopped. People were complaining they weren't getting their book. And I, I had just run out of, uh, you know, the, the last print run was. So you don't have the slide, the, the slide chart anymore either that does that good? Well, that's, I've got that online uh, as a, um, a JavaScript. I figured out how Oh, to, cool. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you're there. I mean, you you, sh you should be able to find that. I, 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 you know, you sent me the link to. Here's the thing: is I didn't realize I had access to your to your site until just a few weeks ago. You, you sent me the email, and it's been so crazy. My life has. I, I just have. I just have scratched the surface of going to the website. So now, folks, all of Kirk's um, resources. It used to be a DVD that he sent out, and and the book, yeah. and, and and the slide chart, which would show you where the different landmarks are on the fretboard for different keys. You just pull this little thing in and out. And it was, it was the, again, a very cool thing. So if he's done it in it's JavaScript, then that's even better. And, mm. um, and, and, and so Kirk, so, so here's the thing. So Kirk makes it, I guess you at least in part make your living, right? Uh, off of plain talk. Is that, is that, it's off the website? These days, that's, that's the only place I make money. Uh -huh. yeah, there's no gigs anymore. You know, yeah. there's no, no gigging. Um, so yeah, that's it. Well, I mean, here's what I recommend before I go into other questions of Kurt is, is if you're serious about learning, really learning the fretboard and really learn how to play and play melodically, this guy is one of this, those very special educators. And I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to be as sincere as <laughs> go watch the videos of him performing and then you'll get what I'm talking about. Um, you, you'll, you'll understand just kind of how awesome this guy is. The, the, the thing to me that that, that, that I love is, is just your note selection. And, and I, I guess it is because you're hitting those chord tones, but you're also playing the really nice passing notes and things. Uh, uh, there, there, there has to be at least uh, some scale and pentatonic and oh, yeah. and modal modal things going on there. You oh, absolutely. Play. Yeah. No, absolutely. But I'm not thinking that. That's the thing. Your back, not, your backbone is all the structure of the. Yeah, yeah. I mean the, the modes and all the other things take this. They they happen automatically yep. if you if you're always keeping track of those chord tones, uh, and using other notes. Well, those other notes become the uh, the modes and the scales and. Uh, but but you're not. That's not what I'm thinking, and that's the main thing. I think because when you think scales, you're thinking in a little linear kind of a fashion, whereas I'm just thinking melody. Right. Yeah. So I have some questions that I'm going to pull aside here so you don't, I don't want to be recording this. So tell me about the slide. How, how, how did, because you're such a splendid slide player, you're a great finger, finger style. You talked about the, your, your influence of finger style, James Taylor, various different yeah. finger pickers. But, but, but how, when did you learn slide? And, and so here's what really impresses me is, you know, so me, I've only had to play slide on four or five different songs. And I used to, we used to do an old Blackfoot song called Train Train. And I would play slide on that. Oh, yeah. And I would play slide on a free bird when we do free bird in the band I was in. I'd, and, uh, and you know, a lot of times, and I would, then I would play some uh, Almond Brothers once in a while and I would tune to E chord. You don't tune to chords. You play no. this brilliant, cool sounding stuff. You play behind the, uh, the slide. You play with slide on your pinky. Big old heavy looking brass slide. Um, 
So, so, so tell me. Oh, there it is. Okay. And, and, and it's a special one. If you have it contoured inside so that it fits your finger in a certain way, it's it's, it's thicker on the end, isn't it? Than the... yeah, yeah, that's mainly just to make it heavier. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. so tell enlighten me about Slide and your, your journey with it. Uh, well, I, I, the first time I heard it, I think that, you know, that, that I really thought, oh, I've got to do that was uh, an Allman Brothers version of These Days. Remember that uh, you know, that beautiful Jackson Brown song? Yeah. Uh, and I heard that probably when I was well living in Montreal, probably 1969, I think. And uh, it was this beautiful. I think it might have actually been pedal steel now, in retrospect. But just that sound of that, you know, just that sliding thing. I thought, oh, I've got to learn how to do that. And of course, I you know I started looking into it, and I I tuned my guitar to open tunings. Uh, but I. I kind of lose track of what I'm doing uh, in open tunings. My that map, that fretboard map that I that I had been working on, uh, had disappeared. You know, when you're in another tuning, yeah, all the positions are you know. So for years I, I played in open tunings, and then eventually I just thought, oh, I can't do this. I'll just go back to standard tuning, and uh, never look back. Really, I actually drop D is my you know. So you do. So you do drop. You do drop your D. Your D at the at the top, right? Yeah. This one here. But, but but play us is a little simple. Yeah. Was that all the chords? You can get all the different flavors. Uh, if we're thinking D, that's a D major. That's a D minor. That's a D major seven. And a D seven. You can you can get all the flavors in standard tuning. Uh, so. It's a kind of, and your fretboard is in the same layout as it always was, except for that bass string. The reason I like drop D is you can kind of get a, an open. There's two fifths and two roots in the fifth down there. Kirk, that is some righteous playing, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I should do it. Where's my, my old? Yeah, take take a break and grab that strap. <laughs> or, okay, he's got another he's got another acoustic here. Oh, my, what is this? Is this a Gibson? Oh, I'll just get these back in here. This is a 1951 Gibson J50. Oh, my gosh. I thought it had to yeah. be. You know. I bought this in 1969 in Montreal for $150. My gosh. In a pawn, it was in a pawn shop. It was all old. And I just, you know, I, I tapped it and I thought, oh boy. It just, it was, yeah. you know, ringing and everything. I, I, have a, I have a 1965 Guild D50 that you're inspiring me to uh, pick up and start playing slide on. <laughs> I yeah, think it would be yeah. the same. So, 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 Kirk, but, but I, I, I do never, I do not want to interrupt you playing. I want you to keep on playing. But question: <laughs> so, so, do you, do you set up your guitars differently when you're playing slide versus playing? No, no, really? no. I use quite heavy strings. So on my strat, my I string my strat up basically like my acoustic, twelve to fifty-four. So. Really? Yeah. And in fact, sometimes I put a sixteen on the, uh, the, the, the E string. Do, 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 you, the do you do you tune down any to 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 reduce stress on the neck? No, you stay stay no. standard pitch. Yeah, yeah. I've never had any problem with uh, too much tension or anything. Uh, but uh, yeah, the heavier the slide, the better. And uh, if you wear it on your pinky, you can use the other fingers. Yes.
So, 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 so you're, you're finding your notes for your one, four, five as you're moving through there and you're playing around those chords. You're, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing the super chord. So when the chord is D, I see all the different, I see the whole fretboard is yeah, D. Yeah. The chord changes to, to G, the whole fretboard becomes changes G. Changes to so A, you change it to back to yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, you know, I have kind of 12 fretboards and each of those can either be major, minor, or dominant. So it really, you know, my, I always try to, you know, what's the least I can think about when I'm playing? Uh, what's the, the smallest, you know, thing I can have in my mind? And plain talk, the, the, the little thing that I describe in plain talk is the, the common, the lowest common denominator, so to speak. That, that is what's beautiful about it, is it breaks it down into digestible chunks. Now, like I say, mm. the rabbit hole goes deep at some point, but it, but still, everything is accessible. And, and so that, it, I think mm. it's one of the most elegantly uh, arranged uh, resources for learning, like I say, to learn a map of the neck and then new approaches that you, that you maybe haven't thought so much about. You know, but you, you're right, Kirk. What happened? What has happened? What, I wonder why it happened. Um Guitar players in the 40s, 50s, maybe on up into the mid 60s, early 60s. Of course, Jimi Hendrix even played a lot off the chords, and, and that's the reason stuff like "Wind Wind Cries Mary" or "Little Wing" or whatever sounds so awesome is that it's it's still it's based on chords. But at some at some point, we departed from that. I don't know if it was riff rock that Jimmy Page started. I don't know if it was a uh, uh, you know what was it? What was it that? That, that, that led us away from chords and more toward playing pentatonic scales. Uh, maybe it was just the whole garage band thing. It was the maybe it was glam rock. Maybe it was punk. Maybe it was all these different. The hair band days was was all just playing scales and modes and stuff as fast as you could, uh, trying mm. to impress. But you know, even even those great fast players, even the Eddie Van Halens and all, uh, played a lot off chord tones. And uh, mm. and, uh, and you know, a lot of people don't realize what a great rhythm player he was and uh but 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 somewhere along the way i i think people got out they lost their sense of melody and, and, and so even and me I, I'm, I'm one of the world's worst i'm, I'm a pentaton I, I, I mix i'm a mixed bag of pentatonics but i have started paying a lot more attention to chords but it, it, particularly where am i going to land or, 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 or how am i going to uh, land on my feet during this song. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. going to the four chord. Okay, I'm throwing it. I'm in key of A, but there's a G in here too. Boy, I'm going to have to back up and I'm going to have to get to the third fret and I'm going to have to play some G tones and stuff here. Mm. Or I'm going to have to find my D triad that slid up the neck to the seventh fret or wherever it is and I'm going to got to play my, my G notes. And, uh, and so uh, uh, one of the things, uh, uh, I play with a, a program called Band in a Box and it puts those chords up on the screen. And, yeah. uh, and that's been a great resource for me to all of a sudden I, I, I look at the demos that they have. Oh, they're playing an F sharp major, major seventh. Okay, well, then that means I got to slide up here. I got to go back. And, and so that has started. Uh, I, I'm starting to, between what you teach and between what Band in a Box forces me to do, I'm starting to become mm. a more melodic player. But but still, I, I think I'm just. I'm just that dude that keeps going back to to blues pentatonics and major pentatonics well, and mixing them up, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're all notes, you know. Yeah. It just the, the, how you classify them, whether you call them chord tones or pentatonics, they're all the same notes, you know. But I use this as a great example of, of um, there's a, a tune called. My dad used to listen to this tune called. Said, "I'm getting sentimental over you." And the chord progression is. Uh, D, D major seven to a C sharp seven to A minor to B seven. I got my I'm in drop D, so don't let this confuse yep, yep, yep. to E nine to A seven to D. So you got you know. Jazz. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, to play to play scales over that, I, I don't know how you would do it. You know, D to C 
D sharp seven, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> to A minor. Your pentatonic yeah, scales, your, your, your modes are not going to work over that. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, not unless you not unless you're changing every chord, yeah. But you know, when you see the chord is G, C sharp, A minor, B seven. Then you just keep you're always on track. Yeah. You know, no matter what. No matter what the chord progression is, you're always playing the right notes. That, that, so I don't know why anyone would do it any different. That, 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 is why, that is why people like me, uh, who, who play mostly modal stuff and play mostly pentatonic scales and, 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 and or major scales, uh, we worry. We're in a constant state of, of semi-panic because you don't know when you're getting, you, you know, you're going along and it's sounding really great. And, and the interesting thing is, it's like certain, I, I used to gig a lot and I'd go out and some nights I would, I would like feel it as you call it. And, and I yeah. think, I think what it was, I was staying simple those nights and, and I wouldn't miss very much. It would, I would be a pretty much on target the whole time. And then there'd be, yeah. there'd be nights that I'd want to get fancy and I was all over the place. And, and I know I was. Yeah. And, and, you know, people would say, well, you're playing kind of jazzy tonight, aren't you? They're in, semi-insulting me. But, <laughs> but, but, but that, that, that my goal, my great goal is to get where I can play, where I can really improvise and play through, through the, over the chord changes and not have to, mm. uh, to worry so much. Because, I, you, know, yeah. you, you know what, you can sweat yourself to death when you're worrying. I love to watch these guitar players. They're so dang cool. They don't even sweat. They play the whole dang gig. Man, when I go out and play, I'm freaking the whole time because I just know I'm, mm. I, I, I'm, I'm this far from going off the rails. That's and I right. swear, I, I, sweat, I, I sweat five <laughs> pounds of sweat every time I play. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, well, you know, if you're thinking chord tones and you know the chord, obviously you have to know the chord. Yeah, yeah. But but you do anyway. I mean, if you're going to be yeah. a, a musician, you have to know what the, the structure of the song. Is. So once you know the chord progression, uh, that's it. You don't have to worry anymore. If you can see your fretboard is the chord, then it's just a matter of joining the dots, really. You know, yeah. yeah. Well, what well, we know way. if if you're playing music that that is a uh, is cover band stuff or stuff that you've written, <clears throat> then you've totally got control of that. the The, the problem is in my day. Of playing, which you're right, it's hard to find gigs anymore. But my day of playing, it was a lot of just going out and jamming. It was big jam sessions. Mm -hmm. It would be blues type things, and you go out and, and, and uh, somebody looks over at you and it, hit it, Tony, or it's your time. To, and you know, and of course, that's when you you know you better have something. You better have a bag of something. And, and, and mm -hmm. so you know, I would develop my bag of licks as best as I could, and, and then just and to hope and pray that it that I landed somewhere on my feet. You know, and yeah, yeah. And, 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 and and luckily, the one cool thing about music is. Even if you hit the wrong note, you're really just one half step off from the right note, or a note that will at least be sort of work, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I got it. So I already asked, one of the questions I have is who who all inspired you? You sort of covered some of that, but but give us give us some more people that people ought to be listening to that you think are really great, Kurt. Oh gee whiz, um, you know, I mean my favorite band is Little Feet. Yeah. And my favorite slide player is uh, Lowell, Lowell George. Lowell George, yeah. Man, uh, he's he's the he's the master. Uh, Ry Cooter, he's another one of my yeah. you know favorite slide players. But uh, guitar wise, I mean, there's just so many of them. You know, I mean, what do you what I, do I you like think? Or what do you think of Derek Trux? Oh, he's amazing. Yeah, he is, isn't he? The whole other he's in a whole other league. You know, he's he's just incredible. I and mean, he's got that that eastern those eastern things, the kind of sitari sounding scales that he plays it over the blues is just magic. You know, it's like it's unique. The the, uh, the the you know the Beatle I always loved was George, and I think the reason I liked George was because he played slide. He didn't play it so much hmm. with the Beatles. He played later, but wasn't George a surprisingly good melodic slide? Oh, he's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, who else? Uh, oh, just countless players. You know, all those guys. And, uh, the guy from Toto and uh, oh, Steve Lukather. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, um, I, I don't really know their names very well, but uh, uh, Tommy, Tommy's an incredible oh, Tommy. player. You know, Tommy. <clears throat> Tommy, pound for pound, is probably maybe the best. And and and, so. and, and the reason I say, yeah, you know, I, I got to see him, Kirk, down in a uh, some some little some little theater in South Carolina a couple years ago, 
And so it's one man show, beautiful light show. He has a great, he has a great little live show. Oh, really? Oh, he, he has his lights and and uh, smoke and stuff. It's just one guy on stage, but oh wow! But but <laughs> it, it's, he played in front of a crowd of maybe three hundred fifty people, and it was like in an old uh, opera house. I'm trying to remember the name of the place. It's down in South Carolina, in um. And I've got some video of it somewhere. Maybe I'll share just a touch of that with with the people mm. since we're talking about him. But but Tommy yeah. is is a mesmerizing player, and uh, holy cow! The, the, so the, the you know, of course, he's finger style a lot. Well, he plays flat pick too, and uh, and yeah. and Tommy even used to play electric, didn't he? I mean, oh yeah, oh hell yeah, yeah. He was in he was in quite a few bands in Australia here in Sydney. Playing electric, a mean, mean electric. Yeah, a Telecaster guy, I believe, right? Is our yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the last time I saw Tommy was at his. He had a brother, Phil. You ever heard of Phil Emanuel? Yeah, well, I, I know, I know that he and his brother. This is just from reading Wikipedia article, articles about him. Is that he and his brother mm -hmm. had a band? It was a family type band or something for a long time. Yeah, they used to tour together. I mean, they been, they started playing when they were four or five years old. You know touring around with the family and, the and wasn't tommy a drummer originally yeah yeah and, that, and it, he, he plays the drums on his guitar and he can get like 60 yeah. different drum sounds on his guitar <laughs> yeah well his brother his brother was an incredible player too he was just oh, slightly more aggressive louder than tommy but incredible technique too but he he died of an asthma attack asthma. a couple of years ago yeah wow. he was in the shower at his brother's house, and uh, he had an attack. He couldn't get to his little breather, and he just died. It was oh, just man, so that's, that's tragic. Good. That is tragic. Wow. So uh, Tommy came over, and, and I played at his his tribute show, and Tommy was there, and, and we did uh, Sleepwalk, because that was one of Tommy's, what one of Phil's favorite tunes was Sleepwalk. So uh, we did that on stage at this beautiful theater in Brisbane. Uh, so that's the last time I saw Tommy. Tommy just played the the rhythm on on Sleepwalk. He's such a good rhythm player too, Tommy. In fact, he said that's what he likes most. <laughs> I was I was real surprised when I watched your video with Tommy. Uh, you, you, having just seen him fairly recently, to realize that he's he's not hearing very well these days. <clears throat> no, me. no, I, I had never heard that. But did you hear why? No, I, I didn't hear why. What was what was what was going oh. on? When his mother was, uh, when he was, when his mother was pregnant with him, she got yellow fever, and it affected his hearing. So he's always been hard of hearing. Unbelievable. Yeah. So here's this guy who's who's made his living making sounds, and he never, you know, he's always had trouble hearing. So I was, I was well, you know, you him. know, one of my favorite singers now. He's a great guitar player too. Is a guy named David Pack. Who used to be in a band called uh, Ambrosia? I don't know if you know. Oh. You know that, that's how much I feel, or uh, what was the other song? Uh, You're the biggest part of me, and uh, of course they, they did a lot of it. And so David Pack, I didn't realize David Pack is a uh, tremendous musician, songwriter, singer, and he's always been deaf in one ear. He only has hearing in wow. one ear, and he's he's a great music producer. So can you imagine? Being the guy that, that sits there and orchestrates everything, but you're having, I guess, to listen to you yeah. got you got your stereo speakers and you're having to figure. I mean, that's insane. And uh, yeah, it is. And, yeah. Uh, and of course, Beethoven was uh, he went went deaf, but created some of the best music that's some of the greatest music's ever been written, and, and couldn't even Ever-living, hear it. Yeah, yeah so, amazing. What, oh, what a blessing! What a what a blessing from God it is to to really have your ears and. And, and you know it's, it's incredible, but but it's incredible what geniuses can overcome, and and so Tommy mm. is Tommy is one of those people. And uh, yeah. I, I I want to talk real quick, real quickly, Kirk, about mm. the effort that it takes to do what you do, to do the tutorial videos. Okay, so question. I know you had the whole plain talk thing, but but the the tutorials that you, you used to give them for free, you put them out there. But but now you started kind of masking them. You can still hear them, but you got. Well, to, but but so yeah. so so does that come with the plain talk subscription as well? The the or do you have to individually pay for each of those uh, lessons? I'm, I'm I'm just in the middle of changing all that over to. Uh, I'm not quite sure what to do with them. I, I might put them all together and just have a thing where you join for a, a flat fee for a year or something and have access to all of them. Uh, they, they did start out being free, but you know, as, as time. A lot of effort, my friend. Oh, but, mm. 
how how did you uh, how did you learn how to manipulate the you know the notes and everything and uh, because you have to sit there and I guess put dots on the screen over and all these different places. Okay, folks, I got to show. I'll to tell you how I do it. Yeah. Okay, I have a dot for every fret position. So I have this in, in Premiere, I have a bin, you know, the little folders. And in that bin, there's a, a little dot for every fret position. And I just go in there, if it's the third fret, third string, it's three dash three, I bring it over and I, I put it, it's very tedious. Uh, so, and, uh, it's so, you must, so you must have like 70 or 80 little layers in Premiere, is that how you, is, that, is it done on layers? Each well, one? No, no, if you think about it, there's only ever six string, there's only six strings on true, a guitar. True, yeah. So there's only ever six six layers of dots. Oh, I see. Uh, and then, then of course, is the dots for the. And then you the pull one. them left or right. I, I, you, you tell it to be string one, string two, string, and you you pull you're pulling your dots with your. Okay, I, I understand how you. Now I get the magic of it. Still, it's impre super yeah. impressive to me. It has to be very time consuming. Yeah. Oh, it is, yeah. But I find it very therapeutic somehow. I kind of, I like getting into that zone where I'm just, you know, it, you're, it's totally creative. Yeah. And at the end of it, you have a nice little video that's, you know, it's really quite rewarding to, to do, you know. Well, uh, and, and, and so you're, you're coming up with your own arrangements for these, these, these standards, a lot of standards. I mean, it's, it's a lot of, you know, He'll take a song like Eleanor Rigby or something, right? Am, am, I, am I wrong? You have done Eleanor Rigby, right? Am I crazy? No, I no, no, haven't done, done that one. That, oh, that, no. that, there's, uh, anyway, you, uh, the, the, a lot of, I'm trying to think of the ones that I've, I've seen a lot, all of them I like. I try to mm. comment on them and, and, and put, give you the thumbs up and everything. And, and, and then I sit back and say, okay, one of these days, one of these days I'm going to sit and I'm going to learn this. <laughs> you know, learn one, yeah. Because you're creating this library that I hope is always there. I, I hope yeah. I hope these videos never go away. I, I have to ask Kirk: Do you do you have uh, kids or any? Uh, when one, one of these days, fifty years, you got four kids. Are are, are any of them musically inclined? Uh, well, I have three grown-up kids and one thirteen-year-old daughter. So she's a, a beautiful dancer. Uh, uh -huh. She loves. And, and at one stage, she was she played piano and she played the Pirates of the Caribbean like a fiend. But, but she doesn't do that anymore. I'm not quite sure why. She just says, oh, I don't want to do that anymore. But she dances like you've never, you know. She's, I'll try and, no, I wish I had my, there's a picture of her doing this. She, she's a ballet dancer. Wow. She, she wants to be the principal dancer of the London Ballet. And I'm wow. sure she, she'll get there. Uh, my other kids, uh, no, that was kind of dad's a musician. That's kind of, you know, they didn't see that as being cool. Well, I, 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 I seriously hope that for as long as YouTube exists, that, that, that you're, you know, I, I honestly, I, I, I talked with a guy a few weeks ago, a guy named Bird Snake Brown. <laughs> He's an awesome guy. He's a jazz guy. I told him the same thing. I, 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 I'll sort of live in fear that your content will go away. <laughs> I was like, oh, you, no, you no. know, please don't let this, you, you don't, don't, don't ever hmm. let that stuff go away. Whatever happens, uh, be sure that you've left it in your will to someone who will cherish that. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, no, for sure. Yeah. But uh, so, so yeah, I am I'm a, such a big fan. Um, so, so it is very, it's, it's a couple things, folks. So there's the plain talk. But then there's also just, Kirk, there must be dozens and dozens and dozens of these arrangements. And a, a hundred and, 146 of them. 126. What what are your favorite ones out of all that you've done? What what, what ones would you recommend people go to first? Um, arrangement wise, you see, I love arranging. I, I love to listen to a tune and pair it right down and just get those essential little bits and turn them into a, a, a finger style arrangement. You know, knitting all the the bass line, the melody line, and and then the little chord fragments. That, that's I, I love doing it. Um, the one I think that um, Moon River. Oh man, that's. Uh, I think I got. I did a pretty nice version of that. Um, Moonlight Serenade, that old jazz standard, yep. the Glenn Miller one. Um, uh, what are some of the others? 
uh, city of New Orleans. That's oh, what, that's I, yeah, I love that. That that's one I was gonna. I, I'm glad you brought that one up. I love that one. Yeah. Um, time to what's that? Time to say goodbye. Uh, that that kind of operatic one that was a big hit for a while. No, no, so, I, yeah, I, yeah I, 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 I've not watched that one. So that's one I got to go back and see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's a whole there's a whole bunch of them, uh, and then, then so, some of them are just things that I come up with myself, just little impromptu yeah. compositions. Uh, but they all, you know, I try and make them all have some educational reason for being there. You know, so. what, what what does it mean to you, Kay? It, it contrasts the satisfaction you get of a, being a gig in touring musician, performing musician, and being a an educator. I mean, what what are the rewards of it? What what does it mean to you? Does one mean more to you than the other? I'm just curious. <laughs> well, as I get older, uh, gigging, uh, doing live shows, I love doing it when I'm there. I, I like it when 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 everything's plugged in and the audience is there and you're playing. But all the other stuff, flying there, yeah, hanging around, sound checking, pulling the gear down, I. I I'm getting a bit old for all that now, so I, I, I don't. I think I prefer um, what I do at home here. Create. I think maybe creating these little arrangements and turning them into uh, lessons is probably my favorite thing right now. Wow. wow. Yeah. Because I'm home. I'm home with my daughter and my, you know, my wife, yeah. and, and I'm not. I'm not out there on the road. Uh, you know, that, that gets a bit wearisome after you know, 50 years of doing it. I, I I tell you one one question I have, and, and forgive me if it seems a little vain, but but I got to ask this anyway because you, you 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 know of course I would comment on your things and 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 tell you how stellar I thought you were and everything, and you know you got you got a pretty good following, uh, over sixty thousand subscribers, uh, getting way up there, and uh, and yet still you show up in my feeds from time to time and you know and i consider myself a at best kind of a hack uh, i mean really i am you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm just curious why in the world would you go watch my videos i mean somebody of your caliber that knows all these other great musicians and i, I am it, it's sort of mystified me uh as i as i see you in the comments from time to time but so tell me is, am i just that crazy uh dude from North Carolina that's funny or something or what is it? Well, <laughs> I love your accent. I love your, your, your accent. I love the fact that you, uh, it was, uh, when I saw that you were into Premier Pro, yeah. uh, I, you know, I kind of felt this uh, kind of brotherhood thing between us because it's, it's an incredible program, isn't it? Adobe oh, yeah. Premier. It's crazy. Uh, and there's all kinds of things in there that you can figure out. Uh, so you were kind of a kindred spirit in that sense. And uh, I just enjoy your videos. What can I say? <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to ask for any more elaboration. I guess I just, I, the, the one reason is, is it's funny, Kurt. Uh, so there's a fairly large music retailer that sends me free guitars. Now, again, I'm not yeah. going to talk about who they are, but, but you know, uh, and, and, you know, they don't send me expensive guitars. They send me cheaper guitars. Uh, and, 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 you know, I, I guess I think, well, they're never going to send me a real American Stratocaster because maybe I'm just not that great. They're going to send that to uh, Joe Blow out there. That's a big, big, a big time, big shot, you know, but, but still yet they, mm. that they take a, um, an interest in me. And so I asked the guy, the guy, so the head of their guitar marketing, I said, why, why are you guys even wasting your time with me? I mean, I'm, I'm what I am. I mean, I'm, I'm okay. On a scale of one to 10, I'd give myself about a 3.8. <laughs> you know, that, 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 that's about where I see myself. Whereas I see you as like a 9.5 or, you know, yeah. I, I see you like Eric Johnson and, and, and Tommy Emanuel and, 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 and these, Thanks, these, these people that really, Pat Metheny and people that know their way around the neck and all that. But, but it, the funny thing he said, he said, well, he said, uh, you're an every man. And it was kind of an off, it's kind of slightly an insult, no, <laughs> but, no. but it was also, it was also a compliment. He said, he said, he said, more people can relate to you than they can if we give a, a give a, a, a guitar to Steve Lucas or, or, or a Brent Mason or somebody, uh, you know, that they're going to watch that and they're going to say, well, I can't do that. But they're going to watch mm. you and say, well, I can do that <laughs> <laughs> and I can afford that guitar. And so, 
and I guess looking back at it, uh, I'm kind of happy and thankful. It's been kind of a, of a neat thing, but but, yeah. but 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 still, I'd like to get where I'm so good they don't send me the cheap guitars anymore. So I'm trying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to give them back, or you keep them? No, no, almost all of them. I, I, I really only had one that I've had to give back. I've probably had. I don't know, 16, 18 guitars sent to me. And a lot of times I'll give them away. Uh, yeah. You know, I give them to, to people that play in church bands or I'll, or I'll give them to auctions, uh, charity auctions and all. Then some of them I keep. Some of them are really keepers and I keep those and hang on mm. to them. And then I, I buy some because I'm just, I, I'm, I'm still, a, like I, I bought this awesome acoustic back here, which oh, is a killer. But I won't get off on that again. Too much about me. Uh, anything else you would like to say to people? Uh, uh, to tell this. If you want to do a shameless uh, promotion, uh, if, if we've not already promoted you enough already, but do, go ahead and do that about the uh, uh, about anything that I've missed that, that you want um, people to know. I think we've covered it all, Glenn. Uh, uh, Tony? I, 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 just, I just want to say I hope people will subscribe to your channel and more people will go there. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah. yeah. Now you're you're Tony Lee. Is that how should I call you, Tony or Tony well, Lee? Well, uh, so so everybody around here, it's really cool. So in in YouTube world, I'm Tony Lee Glenn. That is my full name. And uh, and, and the the reason I do that in YouTube world, everybody around here just calls me Tony. I'm just Tony Glenn. Okay. And, and uh and uh, but there, there at one point there was another Tony Glenn on YouTube back in the early days, and, and so. Uh, uh, I went there. I was going to be Tony Glenn. There was an, already a Tony Glenn, so I just said, "Well, I'll just, oh, use, I'll okay. just use my middle name." <clears throat> and so yeah, it, yeah. it's funny. Uh, uh, so now, as I go through the world, now and again, usually at least once a month, I'll hear somebody say, "You're Tony Lee Glenn," and immediately I know it's a YouTube thing because nobody else calls me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and I, I might be on the Parkway, or might be at Myrtle Beach, or might be in Richmond, Virginia, or you know, or down in Florida. I've had people. Uh, Walk, walk up to me and uh, you're. T I see you. I walk. Yeah, I was, I was up in a Sweetwater Sound mm -hmm. in Indiana. I went up there for a gear fest and had four or five different people say that they'd seen me and uh, <clears throat> and it was, it was really cool. One of my heroes, uh, and one of my guitar heroes, is like you and another, another guy, is a studio guitarist that has a a, um, a YouTube channel and he's very popular. He's super popular uh, studio guitarist <clears throat> and. Uh, and, and, and I went up to him at, at Gear Fest, and I said, oh, man, I love your videos. I, was, I said, you don't know how much I appreciate it. He goes, yeah, yeah, you're that guy from North Carolina. <laughs> and, I could, and, and he said, oh, yeah, I've, I subscribe to you. And I said, what? And so I went back to my hotel room that night, and I looked it up, and sure enough, there he was. I said, holy oh, cow. Yeah. I mean, I've, yeah. got, I've got like the, the blonde singer from Wilson Phillips uh, subscribes to me. Why, I don't know. But uh China Phillips is one of the subscribers. Well, <laughs> the same reason I'm, you know, same reason I come. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Some some weird something. People uh, people just are, are perverse. Per, they're perverse or something. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> wow. But, uh, yeah. No. Look. Um, uh, what can I say about uh, plane talk? I I just want everyone to know what I see. That's why I kind of. That's why I teach it. Uh, I wish I could just give it away, but of course, you know, that's how I make my living. But, uh, you know, uh, when I see some some of these, when I meet players who don't know what I know and I see them struggling and I, I you know, it's, it's such a simple concept that I have uh, about how music works and how to, how to see it on the fretboard that I want everyone to know it. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's my goal in life is make everyone a plant order. <laughs> well, you've you, you've made your mark on me. Uh, my problem is, is is once again it's time. It's like it's like everybody else's. I'm time challenged, but there will come a day when I'm going to try my best to master uh, some of the things you do, and I think that it will take me to a new level. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to learn uh, I'm trying to learn jazz chords and things, but to stop playing the regular old typical chords that I play. I'm trying to learn how to do chord substitutions and things. And I'm trying to learn how to pick the best notes to play the mm. best notes. And, and you know, uh, that's one of the things that there's a, there's a, a guy that used to be a speed metal guy. His name's Paul Gilbert. And uh, yeah, he, he played in these hair bands, Mr. Big and Racer X. And he's, he's one of those guys that played all the notes, all the notes, just a million notes fast as he could play it. Mm. And, and he's, uh, as he, as he's grown up and become a mature musician, he's, tr he's a tremendous guitar player. 
but but he his mantra is I want to play the best notes. I don't care if it's yeah. one note. I want to play that's that right. best note that's going to be. And, and so it's crazy how much better he is now. I mean, how much yeah. a much better player he is now that he's settled down and, and, and yeah. really tried to become more musical. And that's what you do. That's what you do in spades is you, oh, you, 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 you help us become more musical. So, uh, folks, if, if you like my videos at all, if you've enjoyed watching Kirk play some awesome blues and that stuff, go check out his channel. Um, subscribe, g go, go join up with, with uh, Plain Talk, see what it's about. Uh, I think it's worthwhile, particularly I wish I'd had what Kirk does to influence me when I was in my teens. Uh, go see mom and dad, see if you let you borrow the credit card and sign up for Plain Talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, what you say is exactly true. I wish someone had told me when I was starting up, because that's what I, I knew there was something down there on the fretboard that I could keep track of yeah. that would that would point to everything else. And it took me a long, long time to finally stumble onto it. And when I did, you know what it is. It's such a simple thing. Uh, it's something we all learned on day one, basically, of playing the guitar, uh, this little landmark that I use. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was only, it was actually when I was playing slide in standard tuning that's when i started playing slide and standard tuning looking for positions that all of a sudden i went wow look at that wow yeah. uh, well you're you're a brilliant musician you're a heck of a nice guy god bless you keep you and prosper you i hope in, in every way uh keep doing what you're doing don't ever lose heart or anything you you are reaching some of us geeky, dorky guitar guys <laughs> out in the world. <laughs> uh, thanks thanks so much, Sean. It's been great talking to you. I'm so glad we met. And uh, we should do, do this again, uh, even just... just you as, just as, tell as... me when. You, okay. Uh, uh, so I tell you... You just you just let me know. <laughs> okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start keeping even closer track of your channel. And, uh, yeah. and, and I might pop on now and again just to say, Kirk, Show us how you did that, or tell us how, or how did sure. you, how did you come up with that arrangement? What are you thinking that? Uh, well, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, let's do one on arranging because that's what I'm thinking of doing a, a, a series of lessons on how to arrange for finger style. You know, what's the, what's the thought process? In that? <clears throat> the, the, there's a young lady. I cannot think of her last name. She's she's very young. Her name's Gabriella. Do you ever see this? I think she's played with Tommy yeah. before. Is she yeah, not? She's, is she not incredible. a brilliant arranger? I mean, she's a great uh, player, but but she's coming up with these amazing hmm. arrangements, and, and so that, yeah. that that is what that is what just blows my mind that people can do that. Can actually, hmm. you know, Chet had to do it. Tommy has does it. Jerry Reed would do it. Of course, Jerry would just come up with his own stuff. But but hmm. uh, but these people that can that can take a, a, a song, melody, whatever, and then play all the parts together. And, of course, Tommy even yeah. throws drums into it. But, uh, <laughs> but, but you, you, you were brilliant at that, and that would be a great follow-up video. Okay. So, well, okay. Kirk, I will not keep you any longer. Thank you so much for your time. I, oh, my pleasure. To, to send your best to the, to the kids and the, your young daughter and, uh, and your wife, and I will uh, definitely check out some more of your videos. I'm going to go look look really quick and see if I can find uh, those other things that we alluded to earlier in the in the, uh, in okay. the show. All right, my friend. Peace. Thank you so much. so much, folks. Go do it. Check him out now. We'll see you, Kirk. See you yes, later. Sir. Thanks, Tony. Bye bye.